Hey, welcome to the first video of Duck December. I'm going to be doing a commentary at Death at the Christmas Party because it's Christmas themed and I actually wanted to do a commentary on it for a while now since I kind of made it, so it's been like two years now. Um, not all the Duck December videos are going to be Christmas related because I'd be ridiculous. It's just kind of a celebration of, you know, Christmas month, so let's uh, let's do a video every single day. Um, well, I'm actually making this while it's like still mid-November. I'm trying to stock up on videos so I don't miss days. Um, but yeah, Death at the Christmas Party is a good one. I think this is going to be the first video I put up, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go solo with this, and I'm going to hit play right now. Clicked on it, okay. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go solo with this one, and I am going to do other commentaries in the future that have cast members in it. And those will probably be more entertaining to watch, but I, I felt like going solo with this one. I felt like seeing if I could, uh, make an entertaining video just by talking for almost 30 minutes straight. Probably not, but hoping for the best. We got some nice close-up shots here. Pretty sure we had a nice, we have a night, we had, we did have a nice close-up on the minion ornament, which resulted in Tariq giving me a phone call asking me why the fuck I have a minion ornament on my tree. And then a year later, we wrote that we wrote his hatred for minions, especially that specific ornament. Yeah, you can see it right there um, on the tree, um, just because of that like angry phone call he gave me. Obviously, joking angry, but uh. <laughs> That angry phone call he gave me. Yeah, you can see the minion ornament very well in that shot. And we just kind of included in this video. So, yeah, the minion the minion ornament will have to be involved in our third Christmas special this year. Somehow. So this is an interesting episode of Bemis and Company because it's kind of the first one that connected to Bemis 100. For those of you who don't know, there was two YouTube channels that I, I did. Like, one was Bemis 100 and one was Bemis and Company. Um, Bemis 100 was the old one that I did for like four years. Um, Bemis and Company is actually getting pretty close to being as old as Bemis 100. Bemis 100 is like, I think, older than it by a year still. But Bemis and Company, I've almost been doing as long as I did Bemis 100. But we had like a bunch of recurring characters on Bemis 100 and a lot of like lore, like a lot of continuity. And when we started Bemis and Company, we decided to like completely get rid of that and still keep like. It was still us. It was still us going by our names and acting as exaggerated versions of ourselves. We tried to be more skit like rather than episode like. And Death at the Christmas Party is kind of the episode that turned it around, where we decided that we wanted to kind of go back to just being characters again. It's fun. It's 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 more fun that way. And obviously, we need to kind of work on it a little bit because if you keep doing the same thing for so long and it doesn't really catch on, then you you kind of got to move on to something else. And that really is the case with Bemis and Company. But you know, occasionally it really is fun to just have these characters that we've had for like seven years now. And have them do something and like do something again and yeah that's that's the reason uh that's the reason death at the christmas party came along the idea of doing a murder mystery christmas special is something i had for a while just like where it was not only a murder mystery but all the deaths were done in festive ways so i had a uh, fred and joanne down in my basement one day <laughs> i know it sounds weird we hang out in the basement it's just where we have like a bunch of couches set up and it's a nice little area. Like we we actually have flooring down here too. It's not like a regular basement. We we've shown it in we show it in our videos very frequently. Um, but it's nice down here. It's normally messier in the video. Sometimes it's like very messy in the videos. It's actually very clean right now. Um, but yeah, we just got together us three and we started talking about um how we wanted to kill each character off, who was gonna be the killer, um, blah blah blah, just how they're gonna die, which order they're gonna die in. And it was a lot of fun. It was probably the most fun I ever had. One of the most fun times I've ever had writing a video. It was just, we were coming up with all these ideas, lots of fun. Never really worked with Joanne on writing a video after this one. This was the only one she helped me write. Um, but it was great. It was great. Funny thing about Nick here. Um, Nick actually came over very late. He, it was the same night that Nick came over to shoot his scenes, but he wasn't available until later in the night. So three hours after I finished with the, everyone else, Nick came over and I shot all of his bits, and honest to God, like, even though he, he, it's kind of obvious that he wasn't there, well, maybe not obvious, but you don't see him in the shots of anyone else, so maybe some people figured that Nick wasn't there for the shooting day, but I think, like, the lighting and everything is all in order, like, it, it, it kind of looks like he was there, it, like, the, the shot, the light and everything, it, it's very consistent, it's not even good lighting, it's very dull, but, um, got, like, a bit of a glare in the mirror there too with that lamp <sighs> but yeah like uh 
So Nick just came over, and me and him shot his scenes, and it was fun. It was fun. Got gauged there the days before the neck beard. It's it's weird seeing him like that now. It's like it's like his face is naked. He he always has facial hair now. It's it's funny. It's funny that Gage is the one that grew the facial hair. I don't know. I, like <laughs> I probably shouldn't do a lot of videos by myself like this. I don't. I it's hard because you have to like keep um. I have to do this for like twenty more minutes, like a little more than that actually. Just kind of keep talking and like keep it interesting the whole time like i can't stop i have to like be flown throughout the whole thing because if i go silent for a while it's gonna get boring it's gonna be very hard to watch so uh, <laughs> if i say something stupid that's why i'm not good at this if i keep doing it maybe i'd get good at it um that's why i can do a, i can do a podcast with zach because because it's two of us you know it's uh, the game grumps have actually talked about this before and it's very good i I like this. I liked. I like Nick's death. I know we already passed it, but I like Nick's death scenes. I like those shots. I like this part of Gage too. Like, it's what I think it's honestly got my favorite part of this video. It's just like, ah, oh, then puts a chip in his mouth. And it's the unenthused Gage Isley and the very enthused Michael Bemis. Crazy stuff. And there's my little sister's legs in the background. She was not supposed to be there. <laughs> so funny thing with Amanda actually in this video is that um she was not supposed to be in it um Tariq was gonna be like all of Tariq's lines were given to Amanda because Tariq couldn't make it last second like everything was planned out and then just the very last second he couldn't make it and that's not Tariq being unreliable or anything Tariq is one of the most reliable people I know there there was like a legitimate reason he couldn't make it over and you know it was fine and we decided like we, we still wanted to be in it so we made up the whole Christmas Carol thing and I will talk about that when we get to it. it is probably the worst thing in this entire special i think the special like it, obviously there's like some amateur issues like i mean just this this shot that shot of michael talking right there didn't look very good there was like way too much empty space and just a blank white kind of tannish tan wall um because i didn't know how to fucking film stuff <laughs> i didn't know how to fucking set up a good shot um but i, I think like the first 10 minutes of this special are kind of like okay like uh there's a good, there's a decent flow, there's some funny lines, and, uh, but, like, nothing about it's too terrible, but, like, definitely the Christmas party goes downhill really fast at some point, like, it, I, I think it's, like, right after the Bigfoot death scene that it really starts to lose its edge, and that's mainly because of Tariq's scenes, and again, it's not because of Tariq, it's because of how it was done. Death of the Christmas Party was a mess. And Death of the Christmas Party was a mess for a lot of reasons. Like, one of the big reasons was just all of these scenes right here. Like, this this scene right here with everyone in the room together talking took a long-ass time to film. I mean, it, it probably took longer than any of the death scenes, to be honest, just because it was so hard to get everyone to sit down and cooperate. And I'm not... <laughs> I, I, it kind of sounds like I'm an insult on my cast right now. Like, really... That's not a surprise. These are people. Some of these people haven't e even seen each other in a while. Like Greg and Joanne, for example, they went to Votech with me, and um, you know they were just seen. They were just kind of like you know meeting up again for the first time and like months of not seeing each other. So you know they were reconnecting, and a couple other people were you know haven't seen each other in a while. So it was just like it was you know, kind of a nice get together, and people wanted to talk with each other. And it's it's just hard to get people to cooperate in moments like that. It, it's like it's very accidental when it happens, um, but it's hard to organize something with that many people, especially when they're not really actors. You know, these have always, like, some of the people, some people in the Bemis and Company crew who were in it or um, are still in it do actually want to get into acting and actually have done a lot of acting and stuff besides my own work. Um, but a lot of them are just friends who are coming over to help me out. So, yeah, that, organizing that scene was very rough. Another thing that was kind of rough about Death at the Christmas Party, though, is it, it was just, I know this is going to sound very negative, and I'm really not going to go into any details because I'm sure the people who I worked with would not appreciate that. Um, there was just a lot of bad shit going on during this time. I'm not, I'm not going to lie about that. That like if Anyone watching this who was actually in it probably knows what I'm referring to. This, this was a bad time for a lot of people. And in some ways, that kind of makes it a little bit more special, because this was like, you know, a night where tons of horrible things were going on um, at once. Like, some, a lot of people were 
dealing with some stuff that was negative M myself included mine wasn't as big as others but i was you know i was just getting adapted to like college life and i was you know just wrapping up my first semester and i was not doing very well my first semester i got better during my second semester at college was kind of rough you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on at this and this was kind of just a nice time where everyone got to get together and you know that was very nice that i, I think that i think that in the end everyone had a good time I think that there's definitely a lot of stress whenever you have like a long ass video you want to make in one night and this actually was made over the course of three nights but yeah it can it can be rough it can be rough <laughs> it can be rough to shoot got the boiled peanuts up there we have like this boiled peanut can that's always like you occasionally will see it up there my aunt on a beach trip she just went to like this shop and there was like this one there was one person, I don't know if it was on the beach or if actually like went into a store, but it's just some guy selling boiled peanuts. And she said, yeah, no, this is a good idea. Let's buy it. And then we never, we obviously never opened the can up. Uh, we just put it on the shelf and it's, I don't know, it's an inside joke. It's hard to explain, actually. <laughs> My aunt buys weird things. <sighs> yeah, Bigfoot scene right here was shot on the second day. There was the first night and the second night, and the first night is the night when we had, um, it's the night when, like, Amanda and Greg were mainly helping us, um, because Greg wasn't gonna, Greg wasn't as available as everyone else, so that was just kind of like the night, okay, let's get all of Greg's stuff done, and then we also got Nick's stuff done later in the night, um, and Amanda, Amanda actually did have one more scene to shoot with us on night two, um, but we were gonna focus on Fred, Joanne, and Gage's scenes, uh, on a different night. And we fought, we filmed my death scene. We actually filmed my death scene first. It was actually filmed, like, because Nick came later. My death scene was the first one we shot of all the death scenes. And that was mainly, um, it was written that I would die second. And it was also filmed first, just so I can mainly focus on the camera work. And not have to, like, rely on anyone else doing that. So they could just kind of focus on acting and I could be the technical guy. <laughs> Here's a fucking stupid scene. <laughs> I actually like the Bigfoot scene, like, it's very dark, but I, I like the shot where he's, like, running through the neighborhood and you see, like, the Christmas lights. I, I think that's nice. I think it, 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 I feel like this is a Christmas special that really does feel like a Christmas special, and for that, I enjoy it. I think Z Zach's head is gonna fade onto the moon. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Although I will say Bigfoot, while well, I like Bigfoot scene, his death scene is fucking pathetic. It's, I think it's like the worst death in the entire movie. Yeah, he got killed because we broke a couple of, <sighs> broke a couple of, um, ornaments. I do like how one gets stuck to him, though. But we, we, we broke some ornaments against his back and that killed him. And we also just cut to him laying down there, like it doesn't even show him fall over. Uh, maybe we should have got like one of those big ornaments and like they could have like broken it. And then taking a piece from it and like impaled him with it. I don't know. I do like the nipple shot though. Putting the coal on the nipple shot. That was actually a whole concept I liked. As a whole like giving coal to all the naughty people who had to go. <laughs> Here comes the worst scene in the entire fucking, fucking video. Um, again, not Tariq's fault. What, what we were doing and it's fucking, it was like really dumb. It was really, really dumb. We were having Tariq walk um, into people's driveways, and then we would turn the camera so he wouldn't actually have to walk to the door, and then you'd hear him knocking on the door. That one, we didn't even fucking do it. It just, like, we just did a freeze frame, and you can't see him anymore because it's dark, but he's still, like, in the shot, and you can still see him a little bit, honestly. And he, you know, he's knocking on these doors. It, it's just a really poorly put-together scene. It, it, I actually like the songs Tariq sings, too. I... I personally think he has a decent voice. Um, the singing isn't exactly what Tariq wants to get into. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a really poorly put together scene. Like I think, I think Bemis and Company has like a certain level of quality in the videos. Like it's it's very it's like the older stuff. And even the stuff now can be very flawed sometimes. There can be, like, little mistakes. But this is, like, worse than anything on Bemis 100. Like, it's... It is, like, the shittiest moment I think I have in a video. Just because it's so poorly done and it's so confusing on why it's being shot this way. And... 
Yeah, it's just it's just bad. It was us trying to incorporate Tariq in the video, but instead of just like going to friend's house and filming on our friend's front porches and then just like using proper cutting to uh like show him walk to place to place and actually like set a light outside up, we decided to go that route. That route that was probably very confusing and anyone who was watching the video would have gotten bored with so they would have closed out of the video. I think after here it's fine. Like I, I like, I like when he breaks into the house. I think that's funny, but it's just such a bad build-up scene. And like I think Death at the Christmas Party is kind of downhill from the from here on. Like I think the lighting inside the house was pretty bad. I think that uh, I mean I don't know. I think there's definitely parts to enjoy. Still, I kind of like watching Greg act like a maniac with that knife. <laughs> and Amanda saying, "I have a gun." I didn't say this yet, and I wanted to when I first brought it up. So Amanda took Tariq's place that night, and she did it very last second, and she is awesome for doing that. Um, yeah, she was just hanging around the house. My parents, I, I, I actually should thank my parents too, because I told them I was making this video, and they decided that this night that they would go out for dinner, like go out and like yeah, like that we we could use the house, you know, we could t turn all the lights out, and and we obviously didn't achieve that because there's several parts in the film where you can actually see that there is something <laughs> with power on i think like even in one of the shots like you can see the timer on the well yeah just the fucking christmas lights doesn't make any fucking sense the power is supposed to be out how did i just now realize that that's so fucking stupid <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh man maybe he had like a radio he had like a radiator or something he had like uh he had something there's there's a reason Fred's, uh, he's, um, oh, what's it called? I can't even think of it right now. Fuck, he's a warlock. He's a warlock and he used his electric powers. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. He used it to power up the Christmas light. You know what? If it doesn't make sense, a wizard did it. Anywho, moving on. Um, the lighting's bad here. <laughs> it's really fucking bad. I guess this shot's like a little bit cool like not not this one but the one before was like oh yeah like that that's that's a little bit cool looking but it's still really poorly lit i don't know i, I always I, I always like a little bit of like black and blues for a scene it gives a really chill chilly looking look to a scene i guess we should talk about greg a little bit right now like there's the freaking um thermostat with the power on There's a lot of plot holes with Death at the Christmas Party. Yeah, but with Greg, this is... As unfortunate as it is, this is Greg's final video. I mean, it's not his final video that he was in, because he wasn't across the fourth wall, which is temporarily taken down, but will be put back up once I figure out what I'm doing with it. Um, right now, I'm in a complete state of not knowing what the hell I'm, where the hell the project's going. That's that's why <laughs> um, why it's taken down right now because i might re-release as a movie i might just try to make the remaining episodes i really really don't know i know i want to finish it but this is the end of greg in bemis and company like it's the write-off of his character you can see the timer on there okay and that's unfortunate that's unfortunate that this is the way his character had to go um but greg just wasn't really up for it anymore and you know it was nothing personal me and him are still friends and uh i really do wish him well in the future i understand that you can't really just spend you can't like keep you can't like um spend your life <laughs> helping your friend make videos in his basement um but yeah like uh this i, I do wish that we could have give, given greg a friendlier send off we, we just never know that it's going to be the end when it happens and the same could kind of be said about fred and fred did eventually come back but fred temporarily stopped working with us um, when we started shooting across the fourth wall, like, he lost interest, and we actually had Nick take his place as Joel. And because of that, because there was no Bemis and companies for a long time, because Death at the Christmas Party kind of, um, Death at the Christmas Party after this, we started working on across the fourth wall. And I remember it was during Death at the Christmas Party that I was also thinking about doing across the fourth wall. And right when we finished Death at the Christmas Party, you know, I started talking to friend Joanne about across the fourth wall so they actually i'm actually gonna say this right now fred and joanna actually did have involvement in writing across the fourth wall very little because they were only there when i was like first planning it out um but yeah we started working across the fourth wall and that's when fred kind of lost motivation for a little while and of course he came back but at the time i really didn't know that and i was thinking that 
Death at the Christmas Party was also going to be Fred's send-off, and I hated that. Uh, well, okay, for Fred, it's actually not that bad. For Fred, it like, I'm glad it's not the end of his character, but it's kind of like the, once you find out that he's the killer at the end, which I guess, spoiler alerts, I seriously doubt anyone would want to watch this without actually seeing the actual Death at the Christmas Party first. Um, when you find out Fred's the killer, though, and you find out what his motive was, I guess that is kind of a good closure for his character. Like, it's a big dramatic closure. It's just kind of, the only issue with it is it kind of makes Fred this character who was, for the most part, likable, like, just, like, the friendly kid of the group, into a total asshole, and that's all there is to it. But it is closure for a character. For Greg, he just gets, you know, he just gets killed off, like, he, like, <laughs> like which happens often in Bemis and Company episodes. Characters constantly get killed and then return without any reason, and death doesn't really have a consequence in Bemis and Company. But for Greg, it's just he doesn't come back after that. The one thing I will say, though... Um, death at the Christmas party is non-canon. It, it, it's joked about several times in videos where characters kind of acknowledge it a little bit. Um, like Michael said, I was the one who killed everyone at the Christmas party. Um, and go smart. But, oh, I'm losing my train of thought, goddamn. Um, but it is non-canon. So Greg isn't dead. His character is not dead. And I've always tried to think of, like, conclusions of what happened to characters that used to be in Bemis and Company and no longer are, like, you know, like, Brendan, David, um, <laughs> Brendan, David, and Greg now, and I don't know, like, for, um, Brendan, it's actually pretty easy, because we said he moved, and yeah, he moved. Um, for David, I always thought, you know, the last time you see him is, he was in the army, um, during the war scene, so I guess you could just say he's still out fighting still out in the army <laughs> and um and then for greg though I, i've always tried to think about it and i don't know i i guess the only conclusion i can really come to with his character is that he felt the same way that the real greg felt it was time to move on it was time to head on with his life do something new with it and um yeah i would uh i would hope that the character version of greg is doing well as well as the real greg and it's it's really hard to say it's really hard to, it's really hard to like write a character conclusion because again like these characters are so close to who we are like they're very exaggerated versions of course of ourselves but they they do reflect on us a little bit which is a little scary when when talking about Michael <laughs> because he is not a good human being um I don't think that poorly of myself uh, but I definitely uh I definitely do seem as an exaggerated version of myself just like any other character on the show. But like, yeah, it's it's weird of Greg because it's it's he's not just a regular character. He's a character that is strongly based off a good friend of mine. So it's hard to really it's hard to really think of a conclusion for him. And this is the big battle between Fred and Gage. It's a pretty lame fight, pretty poorly lit up, and well, very poorly lit up. Um, but uh, yeah, there it was a fight that was definitely built up over the years gage was the one that pissed fred off more than anyone else and i think it works i do like the nutcracker to the groin shot we're about to get i think fred does it to gage that snowman sings and uh it annoys the shit out of this family me and my one little sister like to play it constantly and it's mainly as a joke because people are annoyed by it I don't know. I'm that guy. I'm that guy who likes to annoy his family. I like the groin shot. Oh, we're about to get to a fucking funny story right here. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, we have a regular candy cane. Um, one thing that I wonder if people... I, I'm sure people noticed. The light was so bad that I was actually concerned that people wouldn't notice this. Because Fred is about to pull out a cock um, candy cane. <laughs> a candy cane in the shape of a penis. Yeah, right there. We, we didn't really get a close-up on it, so I was wondering if people knew that. And what happened is he puts it in Gage's mouth and says, suck it. And I, I, I called Gage, so then I, I got the got the candy cane and said, hey, uh, would we be allowed to get a shot of you actually put it in your mouth? And of course he wasn't down for it, and I was just like, yeah, I, I understand why. I <laughs> That's a very reasonable thing to not want to have video of, of yourself. So we decided that we would just fake it. Um, personally, I actually would have done it. Like, <laughs> I would have done it for the shot, but my character was getting killed off second, so it couldn't be me. 
but I, <laughs> I'm willing to do more shameful things on camera. I like that's the shot I like right there of Tariq where he breaks, and I think, I think it's humorous. But I went to the store with Joanne to buy that, and the person at the desk, because I, I was like obviously kind of awkward, but you know, I was, I was just like. I, I was kind of shrugging it off. I was like, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be weird, but I'm going to go in here, buy this, and never see this guy again, so it won't really matter. And plus, Joanne's with me, so it's a little less awkward. At least I'm not going in by myself to buy this. And I, I go up to the desk, and I... And I, like, I, I go up to the desk to purchase it, and the man just looks at me strange for a second and says, out of all the things in this store, you decide to get a rainbow cock pop. And I was like, I was just feeling very awkward after that, of course, like, mmm. And I was like, yep. Just, that's that's all I said, yep. And he said, awesome. And then he <laughs> ringed it up, bought it, did not smile to me at all. <laughs> he seemed like he was just done at that point. Like, I just, I just set him off the edge. He, he was already having a shitty day, and I just made it a lot worse to him. He lost, he lost hope in humanity. So I bought a fucking rainbow cock pop. For me today you're not you're not supposed to actually buy those things you're supposed to see them in the store and kind of laugh at them a little bit but yeah that's as far as it's supposed to go <laughs> oh we're almost at the end now i spent so much time talking about greg and the fucking rainbow cock pop <laughs> that was funny though honest to god <laughs> i remember like being home that night and just like feeling very awkward about it because it was the same night i called gage and said hey can we put a cock pop in your mouth tonight or when we filmed the video, which was actually, like, a week later. And I was just, like, feeling, hmm, I'm a weirdo, aren't I? <laughs> I went into a store today and bought a fucking rainbow cock pop. And then I asked my friend if I could put it in his mouth. <laughs> and I felt, like, very awkward. I was, like... <laughs> I remember, like, messaging Joanne about it. And I was, like, you know, I feel kind of awkward about it. I'm actually, like, pretty embarrassed about this. Am I, am I, am I a strange? Am I a strange person? And then, I don't remember exactly what I said, but Joanne was just like, Michael, you bought a cock, a cock lollipop. You didn't buy a fucking vibrator. <laughs> oh, oh, and best part, best part, um, my mom wanted to watch this. So I made an edited DVD. I made an, a, a DVD that, like, I, I burned it to a DVD. I have two versions. One is the clean version one is the one that you see on youtube and then there's the clean version and i decided that i wasn't gonna censor all the cursing and whatnot that'd be too much of a hassle and my mom knows i curse in my videos she she doesn't like it but she accepts it um so i made a she really wanted to see it because you know she you know she gave she gave us the house for the night so i made an edited version of the dvd that didn't have the cock <laughs> popping it they neither of my, both of my parents saw it and neither of them know it's in the fucking movie um, <coughs> <coughs> those are the other two people I wanted to thank, though, because yeah, they gave me the house. They gave me the house for the night. That was fucking awesome. It's a fucking cool ass thing for them to do for me, and I appreciate it so much. They're great parents. They've always supported my work. It's all good stuff. That is the end of Death at the Christmas Party, and honestly, God, I had fun doing this. Hope that you enjoyed watching it. Yeah, so fun. Fun stories at this one. Fun. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about with it. I don't think so. Like, um, I know I was talking about more of like, you know, little stories that happened on the set or, you know, preparing for it rather than what was actually going on in the video. Um, but I think that, honest to God, it's kind of like Citizen Kane. I think that the, um, telling of how it was made is more interesting than the movie itself. That is what I think of Death at the Christmas Party. And there's a lot of stories that, of course, I can't tell. Because, like I said, they're personal not to me, but to other people. I'm honest to God, for the most part, willing to share all the personal shit with me. But it's just... It, it was, um again, kind of a rough time for a couple of people. But we all kind of got together and had a top, fun time making this video. And that was nice. And I will... You know, some of these people... I don't think we're ever going to have the same crowd back together. And I'll miss that. I'll miss that. And, you know, there'll be new groups in the future. There'll be, and, you know, I'm still working with most of these guys. It's just not all at, um, it's not like, yeah, yeah, it's mainly Greg isn't in the videos anymore. Nick isn't as involved as he used to be. But even in Death at the Christmas Party, he wasn't as involved as he used to be. Um, but, like, seeing all of us together on screen, you know, that was, 
that was something that was very nice. Uh, I'm so glad that I had them all over to do that, and it was fun. It was a fun night. And I appreciate everyone's help, of course, and I appreciate you guys for watching this. And I'm going to stop rambling now because it's, I'm kind of repeating myself. And I am going to go to bed, I guess. Enjoy the rest of December, guys. This has been Michael with the Deaf and the Krishmi Party. Garmin, Derek.